All right, this is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Our guests are Miguel Tinker Salas, a Venezuelan professor of Pomona College in California. Jeffrey Sachs is with us here in New York, leading economist and director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University. He's recently authored, co-authored a report for the Center for Economic and Policy Research, headlined, Economic Sanctions as Collective Punishment, the Case of Venezuela. So much is being used against the presidency of uh, Maduro, uh, saying he's brought the country to an economic standstill. You make a different case, Jeffrey Sachs. Well, it's, it's not an economic standstill. It's a complete economic collapse, a catastrophe in Venezuela. There was a crisis, uh, for sure, uh, before uh, Trump came to office. But the idea of the Trump administration from the start has been to overthrow Maduro. That's not a hypothesis. So Trump was very explicit in discussions with presidents of Latin America, where he asked them, why shouldn't the U.S. just invade? He said that already in 2017. So the idea of the Trump administration has been to overthrow Maduro from the start. Well, the uh, Latin leaders said, no, no, it's not a good idea. We, we don't want uh, military action. So the U.S. government has been trying to strangle the Venezuelan economy. It started with sanctions uh, in 2017 that prevented, essentially, the country from accessing international capital markets and the oil company from uh, restructuring its loans. That put Venezuela into a hyperinflation. That was the utter collapse. Uh, oil earnings plummeted. The earnings that are used to buy food and medicine collapsed. Uh, that's when the social humanitarian crisis uh, went spiraling out of control. And then in this year, is with this uh, idea, very naive, very uh, stupid in my view, uh, that there would be this self-proclaimed president, which was all choreographed with the United States very, very closely, uh, a, another round of even tighter sanctions, essentially uh, confiscating the earnings and the assets of the Venezuelan government took place. Now Venezuela is in complete, utter catastrophe. A lot of it brought on by the United States deliberately, creating massive, massive suffering. We know there's hunger. We know there's an incredible shortage of uh, medical supplies. Uh, we can only imagine, because uh, we won't know really until the dust settles and careful studies are done, how much excess mortality there is. But surely in, in a context like this, this is a catastrophe largely created by the U.S. because as was said earlier, this is an all-or-nothing strategy. What the U.S., what Trump just doesn't understand and, and what Bolton, of all, uh, of course, uh, never agrees to, is the idea of negotiations. This is an attempt at an overthrow. It's very crude. It's not working. And uh, it's very cruel, because it's uh, punishing 30 million people. How did you come up with the number 40,000 dead as a result of these crippling U.S. sanctions? Let me be clear. Nobody knows. This was uh, a very uh, basic, simple calculation based on estimates of universities in Venezuela that mortality had increased by a certain proportion after the sanctions. I don't want anyone to think that there's precision in these numbers. What is certain, though, staring us in the face, is that there is a humanitarian catastrophe deliberately caused by the United States, by what I would say are illegal sanctions, because they are deliberately trying to bring down a government and trying to create chaos for the purpose of an overthrow of a government. Why? Why are they doing that? This is normal U.S. right-wing foreign policy, nothing different. Uh, this is uh, the same foreign policy that we saw uh, throughout uh, Latin America uh, in the 20th century. It's the same foreign policy that we saw catastrophically in the Middle East. This is Mr. Bolton. This is Mr. Bolton's idea of diplomacy. Uh, this is Trump's idea of diplomacy. You punch someone in the face, you crush your opponent, you try whatever way you can to get your way. It's very simple-minded. It's very crude. And it, Amy, it, it never works. It just leads to catastrophe. Huh.
I want to bring Miguel Tinker-Salas back into this conversation, professor of Pomona College. Uh, as these protests were taking place in—or this coup attempt was taking place in Venezuela, in Honduras, um, there were massive protests against privatization, also huge demonstrations in Paris. Um, you certainly don't get the same kind of coverage. No, you don't. And the reality is that what's happening in Honduras is, is fundamental. Uh, you have an effort of privatization. You have uh, uh, layoffs of, of doctors and of professors and of teachers. Um, and there's massive street protests in, in, in happening in Tegucigalpa and all the major cities. Um, and the attention is all on Venezuela. Um, at the same thing is happening in other, other contexts for Central America. The immigration that's happening as a result of failed U.S. policies. Um, as uh, our colleague was saying earlier, the reality is this was tried elsewhere. The regime change that's being tried in Venezuela has been tried elsewhere in Latin America and has led to, to humanitarian crisis throughout Central America, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, in Mexico until very recently. So again, we know the formula. We know it doesn't produce the change that uh, most people want. And what it does is it aggravates conditions for the majority of the population. So you have, in the case of Venezuela, mistakes made by the Maduro administration that are now exacerbated by the sanctions and that take a toll on, on humans uh, and on the population of the country. We've been showing uh, for our uh, radio audience video, um, uh, just to let you know, of the tear gassing of people in Paris and Honduras right now. Of course, Honduras is a U.S. ally. We're not getting as much coverage of this. Finally, <clears throat> I wanted to ask Jeffrey Sachs about this issue you raise of collective punishment and saying that collective punishment of a civilian population, as <laughs> described by both the Geneva and Hague International Conventions, uh, to which the U.S. is a signatory, um, and that way. And I would say uh, of the OAS also, which explicitly prohibits this kind of uh, hostile action against another country. Uh, U.S. sanctions are now being imposed to bring down governments uh, uh, everywhere. You have similarly in Iran uh, yesterday big announcement of the collapse of the Iranian economy and the IMF attributed it to U.S. sanctions. So this is uh, what the Trump administration is trying to do also vis-a-vis -vis Nicaragua. Uh, Trump said yesterday total uh, blockade on uh, Cuba if they don't smart up. This is pure bullying. Uh, it is completely against international law. It creates uh, havoc. It's hard enough to achieve economic progress, but when uh, the U.S. is using its uh, political power to break other countries, the results uh, absolutely can be devastating. And we see it in Venezuela that it was the kick that pushed Venezuela into this catastrophic uh, spiraling uh, decline and hyperinflation. This is it's always blamed in our press on uh, on Maduro, but people don't even look and understand how the U.S. has the instruments of sanctions, blocking access to financial markets, uh, pushing enterprises into default, blocking trade, confiscating uh, the uh, assets owned by the Venezuelan government, precisely to and with the design of creating this kind of crisis, because the idea is if if the pain is enough in, in the thinking of people like Bolton, then there will be a, a military overthrow. So they're trying to create a, a absolute disaster. Well, what's so stupid about these American policies, these neocon policies, is they do create disaster, but they don't achieve even the political goals of these nasty people like Bolton. It's not as if they're effective and nasty. They're completely ineffective and totally nasty at the same time. But Congress, in our country, nobody looks. It's unbelievable that you have this basically one one man show of Trump doing damage rampaging around the world there's no oversight at all and in the international institutions uh, like the IMF the Inter-American Development Bank people are scared to even say the truth that this bully uh, of the United States especially with the kind of president we have right now no one wants to speak the, the obvious facts of how much damage is being done
how many lives are being lost, how much suffering is being created, how many refugees are being created deliberately. And then, of course, you get the New York Times or someone else saying it's Maduro's whatever, because they don't even look at the obvious, and, <laughs> the, the obvious process. And you have Democratic leaders as well in Congress saying the same thing. Uh, and so we're going to turn right now to a Democrat in Congress. We want to thank Jeffrey Sachs, who is a leading economist, director of the Center for Sustainable Development, Columbia University. We'll link to your report that you put out with the Center for Economic Policy Research, headlined Economic Sanctions as Collective Punishment, the Case of Venezuela. And Miguel Tinker Salas, thanks for joining us, professor at Pomona College in California.